Welcome back. You're watching Modi's Big Bipole Test and I have by far the best television panel you're seeing anywhere on Ning. Rajdeep Sardesai headlines today's executive editor Javed Ansari, our cephologist Ashok Lahiri. With us also this morning, Gaurav Bhatia, thrill no doubt with the leads from Uttar Pradesh, Sanjay Jha representing the Congress, Lalita Kumara Mangalam representing the BJP and Shogoto Roy who's been with us for the past several minutes, but we haven't been able to establish contact with him, so I promised to go to him first. But Dada, there isn't very good news for the TMC. The, we've seen the Congress do well in Chaurangi, leading after four rounds of polling. Uh, essentially, in, do you feel that these bipoles are further proof of the fact that Mamta Banerjee is no longer as all-powerful as she was when she swept the assembly election, sir? No, you are making a mistake. The Chaurangi assembly segment after the fourth round, Congress is leading by 2,558. This is a lead which can be wiped out in the coming rounds. You must remember that in the Lok Sabha poll, the Congress led from this Chaurangi assembly segment and the Congress MLA resigned and that is how the vacancy was created. So, there is nothing new going against BJP, against Congress, against, sorry, TMC. But the main point I want to emphasize that in Boshirat, after the fifth round, TMC has a lead of over 10,500. It is almost unassailable. You must remember that in the Lok Sabha elections, BJP had a lead of 32,000 from the Boshirat assembly segment. TMC has surpassed that and is now leading by 10,500 which seems unassailable. So TMC is actually doing well but I am still hoping that we shall overcome the deficit in Chorongi and emerge winner even if Dada, with municipal there elections no round the corner whatever media <coughs> and the Sarda scam investigation what? now pointing in the direction of Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee herself, is there a sense that the BJP is now closing in through the CBI on Mamta Banerjee and the Trinamool government uh, that Didi herself is on a bit of a sticky wicket with what the CBI investigation is throwing up, sir? Mamta Banerjee is on a solid wicket. Her base is untroubled and BJP, where it led by 32,000 in Lok Sabha poll in Basirat Assembly, has now fallen behind by more than 10,500 votes. Mamta Banerjee's popularity is intact. BJP is trying to manipulate the CBI to defame the Trinamool Congress, but it will not succeed. Even in Chaurangi, where BJP should have done well, they are going third. So BJP, Amit Shah himself visited the Chaurangi constituency. All this Modi Amit Shah magic does not work in Bengal. We do not accept communal politics even though the BJP might try and manipulate the CBI to its own end. When the ultimate report of CBI comes out, truth will prevail. Okay. The guilty will be punished. I hope that is what is happening. So there are no trends. Rather, the BJP should be worried that the trend is against them in uh, Uttar Pradesh. The trend is against them in Rajasthan. The trend is even against them in Gujarat, where they are losing in one of the seats which was held by them. So TMC is on a confident wicket and Boshirat especially is a case in point where in, in Bashir BJP Hatt, was very hopeful in the Lok Sabha elections, the BJP had done remarkably well in the urban pockets, while the Trinamool had done well in the rural pockets. Now we're seeing uh, the the Trinamool Congress leading with a substantial lead in the first four rounds of polling itself. Stay with us, Dada. I want to shift our attention to Uttar Pradesh because that is by far where the biggest story this morning is playing out in the leads that we've seen so far. The Samajwadi party is leading on seven of the 11 seats in Rajdeep. What's the message this bipolar result or trend is throwing out? I think the bipolar result is clearly showing that 
Indian voters vote very differently at times for a central election than they do for a state election. I think the 2014 elections in May was who do you want as your prime minister? The BJP very successfully converted it almost into a presidential style election and people believed that uh, the UPA had failed them and replaced it with a Modi-led government. Now who is the party or who is the candidate at the local level who has the contacts and the networks to actually be seen as your MLA. So I think Indian voters now vote very differently in a central and state election and that's the benefit that the Samajwadi party is getting today and that's the lesson for the BJP. That it's one thing to win an election on the on, on brand Modi at, at the center but once you're fighting a state election then you're going to have to reflect state issues. I don't think love jihad was the state issue. I think good governance is the state issue as well. Which is why I still am baffled as to why the BJP moved away from a winning ticket which they had in May 2014. In September 2014. No, and it also shows Javed to some extent the BJP was getting carried away with the belief of its own wins invincibility. The fact that even Shogoto Roy is speaking so much about the supposed threat from the BJP shows even the Trinamool was beginning to wonder whether the BJP waved exists for real but it shows on the ground structurally organizationally they're very weak in yes these and, and I I believe that they misread the mandate the message that the mandate of 2014 that, that mandate was for Narendra Modi that was for development that was for Vikas it wasn't as Rajiv is saying for love jihad it wasn't for conversions and perhaps they got carried away and and like I said in my opening statement that they try to replicate the Gujarat model Uttar Pradesh is different from Gujarat there is no Narendra Modi to lead them in, in Uttar Pradesh and when the state assembly elections happen they'll have a very difficult time because they don't have a leader who people can identify with in Uttar, Uttar Pradesh. Certainly Sakshi Maharaj and Aditya Nath are not, the, are not the kind of leaders that Uttar Pradesh would like to vote for. Okay. And what is equally significant is that the BSP this time did not contest the election and the general assumption was that all the Dalit votes or at least the majority of them would gravitate towards the BJP. As the results show now that's not happening. We've got leads available now from Menpuri, where Tej Pratap Singh Yadav, Mulayam's grandnephew, is contesting. He's now leading with a big, convincing margin of 52,000 votes. Remember, Menpuri has been projected as a battle of prestige for the Samajwadi party. Once Tej Pratap Singh wins, and it seems highly likely that he will, three generations of the Yadav Khandan will be in parliament. Mulayam himself, who's the MP from Azamgarh. Then you've got Dimpal Yadav Akhilesh's wife, who's the MP from, uh, from Kannauj. And you've got Dharmendar Yadav, uh, who's Akhilesh's brother, who's also an MP from Bijnor. So you'll have three MPs from the Yadav family, all of them in parliament. And it really shows uh, Raj, uh, Rajdeep, that it's essentially the Yadav family. If you want to win in Uttar Pradesh on a SP ticket, only the Yadav family can drive you through. Well, that's what happened in the Lok Sabha election. The five seats that they won were all shared by family members. But look, I think let's be also fair to the Samajwadi party. It's run a, while it's run a terrible government by all accounts in, in Lucknow, it still has a very strong network. You know, these are strong regional forces that you cannot eliminate or believe that one election defeat will wipe them out. I think we've got to understand that these parties have strong regional satraps. Both the Congress and the BJP are suffering as a result. These parties sit in Delhi, do drawing room politics by, uh, 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 to a great extent. They don't go out in the field. In the general elections, it was a matter of life and death for the BJP and RSS. So their workers were out there, they fought the election. In a by-election, you tend to take it a little easy. The complacency sets in. For Samajwadi Party, it becomes a matter of life and death. I just think Samajwadi Party fought this election far more vigorously than the BJP did and the Congress was obviously non-existent. So I think that is the difference, not just Manpuri, but if these results hold, it shows that you will need strong state leadership. Who is the BJP's state leader in UP? I think they have to answer that question in the Lalita future. Kumar Amanglam from the BJP is joining us this morning on several of the seats in Uttar Pradesh where the BJP is trailing. It's not coming in second to the SP, it's actually coming in third even behind the Congress party and that is very bad news given that most of these were sitting BJP seats. Only one was an Apna Dal seat, which again is an ally of the Bharati Janta Party. The other ma'am were all BJP seats and you've conceded uh, seven of those to the Samajwadi Party. It seems your reversals in the bipoles is something that continues even this morning. Uh, I wasn't really able to hear all of which you said. 
But yes, I have to agree that the uh, trends or the results that seem to be coming in from UP are disappointing for the BJP. I think it's possible that because the BSP hasn't contested at all there, uh, the schedule cast or the Dalit votes have not really transferred to the BJP. And uh, it is true that when you contest state elections, uh, the approach of the voters is quite different from when you were contesting national elections. Uh, the national elections were a referendum for development versus the corruption etc. of the Congress. And obviously the people had voted for Mr. Modi and uh, the development agenda that we had set then. In UP, we'll have to wait and see till the results are finally in, and then we'll have to sit in introspection. But Dr. Lani, why did the Dalit vote then go? If the BSP is not in the fray, not done as well if it's as mostly a direct face-off between the BJP and the SP on most seats, and the Dalit vote is not being pocketed by the BSP, we don't have any poll yet, but what's your sense of where the Dalit vote is going? See, there was also a speculation that Sushri Mayabati actually did not contest to pass on our votes to the Samajbadi party. So we, what we'll find out is whether the BSP votes went to... No, but then you're assuming that there is transferability of votes between the Yadavs and the Dalits who are mostly antagonistic and the Dalits of Uttar Pradesh for most parts live in fear of the rampaging Yadavs. But these could have been tactical voting. I don't know. I mean, the answer is not known. But more important than that, Rahul, I think there is a question about BSP's future. Because what BSP has done for this last several elections, they put up candidates all over the country, even when they were losing their deposits most of the places. They never had an alliance. This is the first time when the elephant is not there on the voting machines of Uttar Pradesh. And what it will mean to its organizational structure and its future in its, its performance in future elections only time will I want to go across to Gaurav Bhatia from the Samajwadi party because week after week has brought bad news for Akhilesh whether it's law and order whether it's rape whether it's communal violence the SP has been pushed into a corner finally some good news and breathing space now for Mulayam and his son the chief minister Gaurav Rahul, uh, I was listening to uh, Rajdeep Sardesai and uh, he was saying that the voters vote differently when it comes to the assembly election and the Lok Sabha election. And I do agree with that point he made. But at the same time, let me also tell you that on the ground, the BJP has been fast losing popularity and it's the fastest anti-incumbency <laughs> that we have seen against the central government. Because people voted for change, they had hope from the Narendra Modi government. And what they got to see, especially in UP, was Yogi Adityanath being the symbol of development for BJP. What they got to see was Sakshi Maharaj talking about conversions and love jihad. The voters of UP never thought that this is what the BJP has to offer to them. And that is why I think somewhere they have also realized that BJP promised them something and now they are going completely on a tangent. They have come back to the Samajwadi party. A lot of youth vote that also shifted towards the BJP during the Lok Sabha election. That's Naresh Agarwal from the Samajwadi party and they of course have reason to be thrilled. Sambit Patra from the Bharati Janta party is joining us this morning. Uh, he's not looking very happy and he has reason to be glum because on seats which were mostly held by the BJP, your party is conceding massive ground to the Samajwadi party, Gaurav Bhatia says this is the fastest anti-incumbency that has ever marred the fortunes of any political party. In three months, you've already con uh, conceded 70% of your seats on the seats where bipoles were held, Samit. No, it's but natural for Gaurav Bhatia to say that this is one of the anti-incumbency votes, but I would not agree to him. I mean, well, yes, we would wait for the results to come out. We would even introspect if we do not get as number of seats as we were expecting. But the bigger question over here is, uh, since the time the bipolar dates were announced, uh, the discussion in the media and the discourse in most of the media houses was, is Narendra Modi going to pass this test again? My question is, how many tests Mr. Narendra Modi has to take up? He has already passed tests after tests, not only winning a distinction 
question mark but also coming out as a first class first student but my bigger question is where are the other examinees i do not see rahul ji and i do not see sonia ji in any examination center today they are totally decimated and uh, as far as samajwadi party is concerned well yes we had only seen 3 months ago as to how the samajwadi party had got only 3 seats in uttar pradesh lok sabha elections they may rejoice today if they win a seat or two more but at the end of the day it is the people of uttar pradesh who have realized that samajwadi party has only destroyed their aspirations has only destroyed the law and order situation well these were local elections fought on local ground and as rajdeep was pointing out a few a uh, few minutes ago that well yes we need strong local leadership we should not put the whole issue of examination of narendra modi ji in the forefront in all this we will surely work and we will emerge you know, if, in the if if in gujarat the bjp is doing really well it's because of the leadership of narendra modi if in uttar pradesh the bjp doesn't do very well it's of course got nothing to do with narendra modi <laughs> sambit patra sounds like sanjay jha after the 16th of may he would have said exactly the same thing but there is relief at least for the congress to some extent in rajasthan more than other places where the congress is leading on three of the four seats and all the four seats were earlier held by uh, the bjp indicating that maybe part of what Uh, Sachin Pilot is doing in in Rajasthan seems to be working Sanjay No absolutely Rahul I'm very confident that we'll do well there as well and and more importantly I think even in Uttar Pradesh I think uh, even if we are not leading in any of the seats at the moment uh, which is a disappointment one would like to look at the vote shares that finally emerge even in Uttar Pradesh and the third point is you know the arrogance of power you know yesterday i was in a debate with rajdeep sardesa on your channel along with the bjp spokesperson and 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 she said it with absolute cool aplomb wait for tomorrow's results and you will get to see the endorsement of mr modi and the bjp and how acche din have already arrived i think you can also hear it in sambit not acknowledging the fact that the west there are fundamental issues of communal politics that is completely overtaken what i always believed and i'll say it on your channel tell me which chief minister or prime minister doesn't talk of development i think mr modi spun this country into a web he's fulfilled his dream of becoming a prime minister but end of day i think gaurav bhatia has hit the nail on the head is a spectacular collapse happening just within 3 months and a few weeks